if you have one of the trouble codes listed on the screen which is reporting a problem with the ABS system then in this video I'm going to show you what you can look for and the tests you can do before replacing and removing the ABS pump or a component from it. This information will be valid for any Mercedes cars which uses this type of ABS pump. So the ABS system is made of a couple of components. You've got the pump itself which is located down here. You've got the unit, the brain of the whole system, the connector of it, you've got the brake pressure sensor which is down here you always have six brake lines connected to this unit four of them are going to the wheels one is coming from the pedal and in the middle you've got the brake booster which is another story also you've got the wheel speed sensors i'm going to talk about those in another video also if you open this box the fuse box let's remove these six screws around here so we can take out the cover and if you look down here, you've got the ABS pump relay. And in general, guys, when you want to diagnose a problem, it's a good idea to start with the easiest part. And most of the time, the easiest part is to start with the fuse box and check the relay or the fuse. So in this situation, just take out the relay and test it up. It's a quite simple relay. So let's see. On the relay itself, we've got a small wiring diagram which shows us that pin 85 and 86 are for the electromagnet or the switch. Also, pin number 30 and 87 are on the positive side of the ABS pump, which means that once we close that circuit, the pump should be activated. So let's see, once I apply 12 volts to pin 86 and 85, we should see the full continuity. And here we go. Okay, so once we are done with the relay, one easy way to test if the pump works is to jump these two pins, number 30 and 87. So let's see, we should hear the pump work right now. And we do. So one thing to mention here is that if, for example, you manage to activate the pump by jumping 12 volts to it directly and you hear that it works, but when you jump these two pins here, the pump doesn't activate then you've got a confirmation that something is wrong with the wiring so to unplug the connector you have to press from this side like that and pull it up and the connector will be released it's also a good idea to remove this cover like that it just slides off so you can expose the wires if you look closely on the connector you're gonna see that each wire is numbered starting from the right top corner you've got pin number one two three four five fourteen and fifteen these are on the bottom line now i know that a lot of you guys do not have a lot of equipment in order to diagnose properly any problem on your car i'm gonna use just a voltmeter I've got here the relay removed again and I keep the wire jumped which means that the pump is getting 12 volts at the connector at least. Now the connector is unplugged therefore the pump is not working. I've got the voltmeter connected with the alligator clips on a good ground. We've got the car battery voltage which is 12.7. Now let's test each one of these pins and at least on one of them we should find the 12 volt supply for the ABS pump and the other one should be the signal wire so let's see I'm going to start with pin number one nothing two nothing three nothing four nothing five six seven eight nine ten and here we go we found the pins which delivers the information from the brake sensor to the ABS control unit. So let's continue. 11, nothing, 12, nothing, 13, nothing, 14. And at pin 14, we've got 12 volts. So that's how you can test if the ABS unit is getting 12 volts supply. Now I'm going to still keep this jumper cable on. I will connect the terminal of the voltmeter on the positive side from the car battery. I will take the negative side of the voltmeter and now we should check the grounds on all these wires. So let's see, pin number one, 
good ground good ground and here we've got to the pin number 10 which is for the signal wire and you can see we've got the decrease in voltage because the signal wire is still connected to the ground but you've got a small resistor which will read basically the difference so that's why you can still get the voltage through it let's get to pin 11 good ground pin 12 good ground 13 good ground and on pin number 14 you should not see any connection to the ground because that will mean a short circuit since this pin will deliver the full 12 volts for the pump one of the most common failures of this abs module which is induced by variations like vibration heat and water moisture and the most common one is heat because this unit is exposed to the engine bay which gets hot especially if you live in a hot environment and what will happen is that this unit will get cooled down and warmed up cool down and warm up a lot of times until some of the circuits will break and you can get this intermittent fault so in order to determine that you can just go ahead and heat up the unit in a safe way if you have a heat gun or something like that and then you can go ahead and test if the pump works or if the sensor sends the correct information and so on because it can be a big difference while you work on the room temperature compared to the operating temperature of the engine and inside the engine bay so from this point if you want to remove the ABS module you will need a T20 okay last bolt is out and here it comes as you can see here are the valves most of the time these things do not leak but right so next let's unplug the brake sensor so we can expose the wires one is red and green this is gonna be the signal wire I'm going to back probe it I've got the negative side of the voltmeter on the ground and the positive side of the voltmeter on this red and green wire for the signal and now when I'm going to turn the key in the second position in the ignition you should see the 5 volts So you could see 5 volts to the reference wire, the green and red one is the reference wire, the blue one in the middle is the signal wire, and you should see 0.08 volts or 0.1 volts. This is going to read the pressure of the sensor and you've got the ground, negative side of the voltmeter on the ground and the positive side on 12 volts and we should be able to read the car battery even with the ignition off so at least we've got a good ground at the moment now once we confirm that through the connector is running the correct voltage now i'm going to connect it to the sensor i'm going to back probe the signal wire i'm interested in that and confirm that i have a good connection on the signal wire which i do so i can connect it now to the ground now I'm going to turn the key in the second position and we should be able to see how much the ABS module is getting from the brake pressure sensor through the signal wire. Okay, so at the moment we've got 0.6 volts. Now I'm going to press on the brakes and this should increase. Okay, so as you could see, without the brake booster, I was able to increase the signal to 1 volts, 1.2 volts or something like that now this doesn't guarantee that the sensor will work under some variables which means that if for example i will be able to apply more pressure with the help from the brake booster the sensor might get an error you can do the same test with the engine on i'm not going to do the test because it's very noisy but it's quite easy you just start the engine and repeat the test also from this point if your problem is intermittent which means that once you erase the code it takes a while until it comes out again the abs code that will mean that under certain conditions the error occurs which means that which means that the abs module is affected by these three options vibration water or heat or temperature it can be also the negative temperature so you can do as much as you can induce these values like vibration you can just shake this thing and see if the signal is changing 
or you can just heat up a little bit this module especially in this area where the sensor is or around the module area okay so with that being said let's see how to remove this abs pump from this car from this point make sure that you've got some new brake fluid dot 4 which is compatible with this car so let's see just loosen them up all of them first don't be afraid to pull it from here because let's just hold it on on those rubber now let's see to install the new one back just insert it in there now one of the biggest challenges is to reinstall these lines correctly and for that make sure that the nut goes in there straight you can use a couple of methods to check that you either look from above like that in a straight line and you should see the nut if it's on the side or not so for example this one goes by hand which is another sign that the nut goes well it should go easy at least a couple of two three threads by hand okay so as you look from the top guess which one of the bolts is not straight which one does not sit properly in there is this one okay so hopefully you notice that you can see that this one it doesn't go straight in there and you do not want to force the threads because once you force the threads all that material will go down and the line will not seal completely on the post there and the, the line will leak and definitely you don't want that especially from a new pump so after you are done with the pump make sure that you add the new brake fluid usually it will bleed by itself you do not need to do much more than just adding the fluid until this reservoir is full all right guys so that was pretty much it thanks for watching if you're new to this channel and you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe as well if you want to see more videos from me in the future and hopefully i can invest in more equipment to show you a lot more so stay tuned and i'll see you soon